we're in the lab today and what we're going to concentrate on is photographing footwear impressions and these are going to be the category two images. We're uh, in the lab because it's a controlled environment and we're going to demonstrate uh, the procedure for you. Just remember that if we had fo actual footwear impressions on say the outside of a building, we would be documenting where these are located. We would be also documenting direction of travel. Uh, but what we're doing in the lab is we're going to look at the technical aspects of how to set the camera up, how to set the tripod, how to use the flash, so that these things are properly documented so that a, an expert could come and analyze um, our photographs, compare those with other two-dimensional impressions, and then possibly make a match on a, uh, on a suspect if they were wearing the same footwear. So that's what we're going to go through, and I'm going to walk you through. The first thing I'm going to do is, is we'll take a look at the camera settings, and uh, we'll show you how to set this up to make sure that we get the best image. If we go to our menu settings on the camera, and we bring that up, there is a, an image uh, quality. We're going to start with image quality, and instead of using a JPEG image where we have a compression issue, we're going to set this on a, a raw and on a, for example, on a Nikon camera, that's, that's the NEF file, but uh, on a Fuji camera, it's gonna be called something different and then also on a Canon, but this is all raw and just consider it raw, uncompressed information and that's important. That's very important for that scientific analysis. So, we're gonna set the image on raw and I personally, if the option is on the camera, what I'll do, I'll shoot it also as a raw file and also as a fine JPEG because that's going to give us basically two different files that a person, anybody can look at a JPEG file. Um, so if I needed a latent print examiner or a footwear examiner to look at this file, they could also access it and see it in a JPEG if they didn't have the ability to open up this raw file, which is proprietary to Nikon, for example. So that's why we do it in both formats. The other thing we want to set on the camera is going to be the image size. And the image size we're going to shoot at the largest format that we can. So we're going to check that. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to check our white balance. Our white balance is to ensure that we have the correct color rendition. Uh, this impression happens to be left in kind of a yellowish colored sand. So I want that sand to appear in the image is exactly as the way that, that, uh, that sand appears. I don't want it to have a whitish cast or more of a bluish cast, so I've got to match that up. That's important. And the other thing uh, that we set on the camera is going to be the ISO sensitivity, and that is setting our sensor to, uh, for the sensitivity of the light. So we're going to set two, for 200 on that. That's a good, good speed to use, a good ISO setting for us to use. Now, if you've noticed, I've done all of these adjustments, the adjustments so far with the camera in my hand. I'm not going to place the camera on the tripod over the impression and then start making these adjustments because the potential to drop the camera or drop something into that impression is always there and that would ruin the impression. So that's why everything's being done in my hand right now. A few other things we're going to do to just go ahead and get the settings out of the way. I'm going to set the aperture setting on the camera to the smallest opening size and that consequently is the largest f-stop number and on this lens it happens to be f29. If the number went up to 36 I would set it all the way up to 36 but I'm going to do that so that I maximize my depth of field. Think of depth of field as getting everything into focus that is at different planes from the camera. In other words if the part of the impression is a half an inch deep and another part is an inch deep, then those are two different planes. So it's important that we stop that opening down. We call it stopping down. We get that opening small so that all of that comes into focus. And uh, that we do that, and that takes care of that on the camera. Once I've adjusted that, I'm just going to adjust the shutter speed so that I get a correct exposure, so that uh, I get a, just a good exposure for the image. So we'll take care of that. The other thing I like to do, some people use what we call is a, uh, call a cable release, but what I like to do is use the self timer and it delays the opening of the shutter uh, for, if you set it for five or 10 seconds, it's gonna delay that reaction. 
and it keeps my hands off of the camera because if you touch a camera, uh, there's, there's uh, no doubt that you're going to have a vibration. So we, we want to use the self timer or a cable release when we're doing this. Once we start working around our way around with a flash unit, that's very helpful to us because it basically put, makes us hand, hands free. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the camera, we've set the self timer, I'm going to attach the camera now to the, uh, to the tripod, and we're going to adjust the meter, and the meters to get the proper exposure. I'm also going to set the focal length, before I even do that, I am going to, I just had a, another thought that I almost forgot to tell you about, is I'm going to set the focal length on the camera. The focal length is controlled by the lens, and I'm going to set this at right at about 35 millimeters. And on this particular camera, without going into all the technical aspects of this, this comes up to the equivalent of around 50 millimeters. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get what is the normal perspective with this camera, and that's very important. It also helps keep, if I, ac if I ac accidentally used 18 millimeters, which is a, what we call a shorter than normal view, I'll have a curvature to my scale. So I'm introducing distortion and I don't want that to happen. So I know there's a, there are a lot of things to consider here, but we're just kind of going through them one at a time. So remember, we're gonna set that lens on this camera at about 35 millimeters. And uh, so, and this will give us what we need. So I'm gonna take this, I've got my exposure meter set on manual, uh, and then I'm going to attach the camera. Now, I'm not over the impression I'm not over that impression, so as I attach it and get everything tightened up good, there's no chance of anything falling and, uh, into that impression. If you'll notice, uh, this tripod that I'm using, uh, this tripod has a center post that can be turned upside down, and we call it inverting the tripod, the center post. This is very important. It also has legs that will expand instead of being locked into a very upright position, it will let these legs expand. And what this gives me is a lot of space to work around this impression and then bring light in from different angles without having the interference of the tripod legs. So this is a, this is a good piece of equipment for us. I'm gonna get the camera, now I'm positioning the camera over the impression. And the other thing to note is the camera, the is positioned in the proper orientation for the footwear impression. The, the impression is running this way. We've got the heel here and the toe here, and so I've got the camera positioned in this sideways orientation so that I'm able to fill the frame as much as possible with that vital information and not, uh, if I turned it this way, if I turned it the opposite direction like this, then I would have to raise the camera up twice as high to get that, uh, that image, and that is affecting our resolution. And what we're doing is uh, we're not maximizing the use of our camera in that case. So I'm trying to turn it, I'm gonna turn it this way, and what I'm gonna do now is look through the viewfinder, and I'm going to, I've already set my focal length. So if I do any change, I'm not gonna change my focal length, I'll adjust my focus, and I'm going to use this in the manual. I'm going to use this in the manual focus because I'm going to shoot multiple images of this impression. And I don't want the focus to shift in and out. So I'm going to leave that set at manual. And there's another reason for doing that. And we'll get to that in just a minute as I continue this demonstration. But I'll get this, get this in focus. And I've got the, the camera back now, the, the back is parallel to that impression. And I can tell that because I've got equal focus in four different points on this impression. I've got an equal, I've got focus, good focus here and here and here and here. So I know that on the axis of the camera, I've got this properly oriented, okay? I'm gonna take an exposure reading and I'm just going to take a picture with the lighting condition that exists uh, right now. So we should have a delayed uh, response and the, the self timer is counting down right now. And we just took a picture of this impression. And I'm gonna look at the viewfinder, look at the LCD screen, review that, see if I need to make any adjustments. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply 
move this in just a little bit because I can fill the frame a little bit better. I'm not going to change my focal length by zooming because I don't want to change my perception. And once I've done that, I've got everything set now. Now what I did with that first shot, and we normally would shoot, we would shoot two or three shots of that same thing, that is showing the, uh, the print as we found it, the lighting conditions and so forth. Now what I'm got, getting ready to do, and this is the really important part, is we're going to begin to side light this impression, uh, and we're also going to scale it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scale. Remember, one of the important things about crime scene documentation is we have to, we have to photograph anything that we find uh, prior to adding any scales or markers or anything like that. So this is just one of those basic tenets that we do. I'm going to go back down here, and now I'm going to add the scale. And when I add the scale, I'm going to position it so that the scale is right in alignment with this footwear impression. Okay, and once I've gotten that positioned, this is very close to uh, the same level, the same level of the impression. So I'm going to leave the scale like that because I don't want to risk pushing any of the dirt into or any of the sand into the impression. So this is how I'm going to frame this up. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I get the scale. All I've done is shift the camera just a little bit, but I haven't changed the focus. I haven't changed the focal length. And now I've got the scale to where it's perfectly aligned in the edges of the viewfinder. Once I've done that, I'm going to change another thing on the exposure because I'm going to start using a flash and I'm going to put my shutter speed on the maximum synchronization speed for this flash. And that's going to be 200th of a second. So what the flash is going to help us do is going to minimize any movement, it's going to give us a control type of light, and it's also going to uh, give us a consistent lighting. So when I bring this, this flash in from different directions, we're going to have the exact same color. We're going to have great depth of field. It's going to be motion free and it's going to give that analyst a lot of good information to look at. With the self timer set, once I release this, then I'll be able to stand back, get up just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring this light in from an angle and I'm going to position this at about three feet away and then we get that the flash goes off and that gives me a nice oblique side lighting from this direction so I've fired the flash between the opening of the tripod legs not through the openings because if I go through the openings then I would end up with a uh, with a shadow going right through there Another thing I can do, I, I can change my angle a little bit. The deeper the impression, then the higher you raise the flash. You bring it up a little bit, you elevate it. Okay, we don't want to position a flash right on top of the impression like this, because if we did that, the light will create a hot spot more in the middle. So we want to have this back at about, uh, at about three feet. That's the position we would use. Now another thing that uh, we also do, we've got a light that is simulating um, sunlight and it's coming in and what we do uh, when we're outside doing this is we'll take something as simple as one of these sun shades that you can buy for your car that you get at Walmart and in order to control the light we'll use this and we'll block the light. So if there was sunlight coming in like this, I would block it with this and I would also cause my flash to go off. And sometimes you need an assistant. If you got somebody to, and you can't quite stretch it out, you can get someone else to help you. But I'm sh able to shade that impression and then have the flash go off. Okay, we've done it from that side. And then what I'll end up doing is I'm going to work my way around this impression and I'm gonna bring that flash in from different, from the different sides because we're casting what we call 
we're, we're casting shadows on one side and we're casting or creating highlights on the other. So the examiner, if it either you or whoever's going to do this examination, this gives them a great opportunity to see a lot of different information. And once we've captured that, once we've done, um, we've done that and we shot this overall view of this impression, the, uh, the last thing that we do to also increase our uh, resolution is we leave ex everything exactly the way it is, but then we actually take the camera and we're going to lower it down like this and I'm going to photograph what you can consider the toe portion and then I'm going to separately photograph the heel portion. And that's going to be, I'm going to create an overlap so that I, that I know exactly where that portion is. But I would come in and I'm going to move, once I get my focus, all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this tripod and I'm going to photograph that heel, uh, the toe portion. And you say, well, you're doing that on a floor that's nice and smooth. That would be more difficult to do outside if you were actually in a field or something like that. But the key part, once you've focused and you have your fo focal length set, you don't change that because I can slide the camera even if the ground is uneven, I can slide the camera over and have that portion in focus. Once I slide it back toward the heel portion, because I maintain the same thing, the focus, focal length, I may have to reposition the camera a little bit, but I've got the exact same registration. So that's an important thing to remember. So once we do this, we would do the same thing. We would take our, and we would shade the light and wait for the flash to go off and we photograph that toe portion and then we'll move the camera and if anything has changed for example if the floor something was a little bit uneven or the ground was a little bit uneven if I had to raise this up just a little bit which I do because I probably shifted the tripod legs just a little and now I'm back in focus, so I know I've got the exact same image size, so now I'm ready to do that toe portion. I mean, excuse me, I've done the toe portion, so now I'm doing the heel portion. One of the, uh, the best, one of the best um, modes to use on a flash, when you look at it, is a, uh, it's called TTL or TTLBL, this stands for through the lens, it stands for balance fill flash. So this is integrated with the camera and they work together to determine a really good exposure for, for the footwear impression. But this is how we go through and document um, our footwear impressions. And once we've done that, the next step, we feel that we've got really good images of this, then the next step is to cast this impression and we're gonna do that in, in our next section.